Hi, welcome to my beginner's tutorial for Voxel Tycoon. I'm Icon and this video will guide you through all the things you need to know to enjoy this transportation and production game. I will talk you through the basics of road transportation, rail transportation, science and production. So we will cover up all the basic gameplay mechanisms and once this video is done, you should be able to learn yourself through this nice little game. So since we got lots of things on the plate, let's get started. So the base gameplay loop is quite simple. There are towns and there are resources. Towns have demands and you are here to, to fulfill these demands. Towns need wares for their companies or, pe or people via passenger systems. Towns can be either specialized into tourism, industry or being mixed. Simply said, if you provide a town with goods, it will grow. Industrial towns will grow faster if you provide them. Industrial goods, tourist towns will grow faster if you provide them passengers and so on mixed towns balanced pretty simple so we're going to start out with a road connection and then we're going to do a little bit of a train connection afterwards to cover up all the things so the first adventure i want to do is create a connection between this coal deposit and this heating plant down there in point roberts so let's get right started to create coals, we need a coal mine, which has to be inside the coal deposit. You see that blue circle is depicting if it's uh, close enough. And now we're going to head over to the road menu, pick up a station. It has to be a freight station. And here the same blue circle rule applies. It has to be inside. And there we go. Placed it down. And now we got that station where the coals will be ready to be picked up next stack uh, next stop is the next freight station for the coals to be supplied at and you see here it's the same blue circle rule it has to be inside the blue circle and already a little bit of a problem arises we need to destroy some houses to get inside the blue circle sadly blue Sadly, houses are really costly to destroy. I wonder why. But oh, look at that here. Down here, we have actually found a spot. Just uh, always keep attention to the road tiles really being connected to the main road. Sometimes there's a little bit of a false friend happening. Okay, now we got this all done. We select the road tool and ultimately connect these two areas with each other. Boom. So now we got that really long road and the next thing we need is a garage where we can buy the cars. As you see here, there are slots where it really does not connect or no, it was just a misplacement. When there are slopes on roads, sometimes the, connect the connections have a little bit of issues. But uh, if you pay attention to those, you won't have any troubles. All right. In the garage, we can buy cars. We're going to pick up the double A truck. Up here you see what kind of uh, wares can be transported and because I know that one car won't be enough we're going to buy two directly all right let's select the car at a stop and tell it to load all the cargo here at another stop and tell it to unload all the cargo here easy isn't it let's just flick the switch and watch our car go since I don't want to um, do that only with one car, let's configure the second one. I could do this all manually, but instead we're going to edit this one and save the route. Boom. And just get over here, edit that one, press this button and copy that route. You see the, uh, the connected stations will be lit up green when you mouse over that route to see where things are, be, are going to be. So. Let's put that on OK and let that get that second car going as well. This way you can replicate tours very easily with no little to no hassle whatsoever. OK, now we got our little coal business rolling and that's basically all that's to it. We could now, of course, add up lots and lots of extra cars to squish out as much profit as possible. But let's rather head over to the tourism department instead and connect the town of Duluth with Point Roberts. First things first, we're going to add another street, put a little bit of a crossing here, you see. I can't somehow build here. Somehow, sometimes these just play don't play nicely together. If that happens, just 
build a little bit of a curvature and you're good. Now, we build a bus stop next. Bus stops, as you see, have that same radius and try to catch as many houses as possible. This one is really good and same rules apply. Try to connect it to the road as good as you can. Try to destroy as little houses as possible to save costs. Now we need another bus stop here and I want to put it down there. So you see here, this one is going to be a little bit more costly because I'm going to destroy one of the houses. Boom. Oh, I destroyed a car. Whoops by placing down the thing there. So you see, don't do that. You can wreck your cars. I actually didn't know that I can wreck my cars myself, but well, let's just replace that big boy. Accidents happen, you know, but let's get back to the garage and buy a new car, which transports passengers. We buy that bad boy and passenger stops are being configured by the transfer button. The transfer button checks if there are passengers on the car to unload and then it and then it starts to load new passengers. This way you're able to provide passenger transport at both bus stops without needing two, uh, two buses. That's pretty nifty, isn't it? So our second car now, let's follow him with that button, gets over there, picks up the passengers, drives all the way back to the other town, deposits, uh, delivers the passengers there and picks up the new passengers. Really easy, really simple money. And here the same rules apply. I could just save that and bring up more cars if I want to. And that's pretty much all that is there that is to mention for simple car transportation. Now let's get our iron ore to this, to this place via trains. All right. Trains work a little bit differently. They are way more efficient. They can transport much more freight and therefore also they are a lot more costly and a lot more complicated. So iron mine has to be installed here and the train stops go via stations. We go for a freight station and I'm going to place it down just like here. And here's the same thing. The blue circle has to be inside the iron mine. Otherwise things won't work. And a, with the train stations, we can configure the platform length. The platform length defines how long the train can be, which you place inside, uh, inside the transportation loop. The longer the station, the bigger the train can be really important to know because you can't change the length of these stations later. So let's see, can I, oh, lucky me, I can just connect these directly. Wonderful. The only thing we're missing now is a depot where we're going to buy our trains. It's the same like a garage, just for trains. Now, the basic configuration of the game allows your trains to reverse at a train station, which is completely unrealistic. But for the sake of the game, if you want it more complicated, you can disable that in the settings, then you have to build more loops. But since this is a beginner's tutorial, I just wanted to mention it. All right, for the trains, we need a locomotive. So let's buy the big one. It's just a difference between the power and the speed. And now we get to trans to configure our train. The plus icon here, let's just uh, pick up the cars. Of course, since we're transporting iron ore, we're going to need either the open car or the platform car. As you see here, they are different in their weight. The heavier car is just transporting more and it's also costier. So we're going to pick up three open cars and check out here is the length of the train. As you can see here, you can also change up segments here by a removal or flip them, duplicate them, whatever. There's a lot of things possible, but for the starters, this is a wonderful starting train. Okay, we buy that one and the configuration works exactly the same like it does for cars. We select load and unload at these, press okay and get that train going. Here you see, train is picking up the goods and just like we had it with the with the cars, the train is now just transporting its goods back and forth 
making sweet profits. All right, now we have set up the basics. Of course, passenger transportation via trains works similar, and you can use train signals to get up a larger network of trains, which use several train tracks at once. But since this is a beginner's tutorial, I don't want to dive into that. I just want to mention it is there, you can do it, but we're going to do that in a different tutorial for sure. Now, let's talk about towns, shall we? The demands of a town can be checked out here. If you provide enough wares to the companies in a town, they will be happier. And once they are happier, the towns will grow. As you see here, the passenger uh, d demands are supplied really good. Iron ore and coal are not so good. And here's the thing, the better you fulfill the demands of a company, the higher its demands will grow. So basically it is worth trying to fulfill these demands as good as you can, because not only will the demands grow, the towns will grow, there will be new companies and this will be new business. If you don't fulfill the needs of a company long enough, it will eventually go bankrupt and close down. But don't you worry, new companies will open up at some point. But that's just worth mentioning. All right, let's head up to the next chapter. And that's science, because there's also research to be done. Now we're going to do our sciencey stuff at this place. Let's place down our laboratory here and check out what we can do. One laboratory can always research one project. And since I wanted to do the production thingies, I want to research manufacturing first. The manufacturing technology only needs time and money. The other technologies will also need goods for that. So let's research manufacturing real quick. And then we're going to talk about iron smelting because this will be what we want to. But it's locked now. So start research. And as you see here, it's just ticking down and costing money. It's not doing anything beyond that. So I'll be right back once this technology will is researched. Now we're at the last day of our research. And now this gets done. So manufacturing research has been completed. And now we can research iron smelting. Alongside with these technologies, we can also research better gasoline engines, unlocking better cars, higher manufacturing technologies, which allow us to manufacture other things, and a lot of other, uh, a lot of new cool technologies are available here. But what all these other technologies have in common is that they have a demand for resources. So we tell our laboratory now to research iron smelting for us. This need opens up the need for iron ore now. So since I'm a little bit lazy, I don't want to pick, uh, put up a train track system. So we're going to do a freight station. Just keep make sure it is in the vicinity here. And of course, another freight station goes where the laboratories add. And then we're going to put up a road connector. Oh, oopsie. That wasn't supposed to be like that. There we go, boom. And now we are just going to buy a handful of cars. So we're picking up the double A track truck to use that. And I buy actually three of them because I want to be done in a decent amount of time. So here goes the same procedure. We load up items there and we unload them over there. Okay, off we go, save the route and configure it to all the other cars. Just like that. I love it how quickly you can configure these things in a hurry and there we go so what will happen now is these cars will zoom over to the Duluth transfer where there's more than enough iron ore available pack it up like that and they're heading over to the Duluth East stop transporting their goods to the laboratory which is now able to work decently why did these other trucks not unload though that's uh a little bit, well, 
That shouldn't have happened. Looks a little bit buggy to me. Anywho, the same rules now apply. We have to wait until the, the research has been completed. So, for some odd reason, they don't want to unload there. Well, I'll just pause the game <laughs> until that has been resolved. And uh, we're going to I'm going to show you what happens after that. I'm not really sure. I have the feeling like they are coming in too fast at the same time, and there's a problem with the unloading. Maybe there's also only room for five units of iron bars there. That could be the, uh, also the thing. Well, let's try that out by building a warehouse here, because you can also just pack up warehouses that store these items for you, but yeah. Yeah, that's just as it is. There's only enough room in the laboratory for one go. I didn't know that. Last time I did that, I researched a little bit slower, but good to know. Anywho, I'm going to pause the game at this point and of course, uh, pause the game, pause the video at this point and we're going to meet each other as soon as the research has been done. I'm going to stagger these trucks in a meaningful way and we're going to see each other after that research has been condoned. Now, I just uh, noticed that I picked that it's worth mentioning to use the warehouse here. We're now using simply the warehouse functionality to store more iron ore here. And now what's happening is the warehouse is providing the iron ore to the laboratory as needed. So we don't have to put it up manually tediously. So that's way to go. The warehouse has been just built here. You can tell it what it has, what it should store there. You can select it and that's that. All right, now after all these things are set up, we're going to wait until it's done. Now we are at our last day of research and iron smelting is now finished. So we have unlocked via the manufacturing technology the necessary tools to manufacture things. We have now access to conveyor belts and we also have access to other devices. So. For the iron smelting, we need the alloy smelter and we're going to do this right away. So, this works like that. We now go over to our iron mine and we need first a factory. That's going to be the alloy smelter. As you see here, the alloy smelter is providing conveyor belts in several directions. I'm going to use one of those here and boom. So we see now here it needs coal and iron ore to turn that into iron bars. We luckily have coal already available here, so let's get right started. We need conveyor devices and that's a connector. A connector needs to go at this place and then we get to lead it all the way there. Oh, the conveyor is too long. Okay, so since that's the case, we need to do it a little bit differently. I didn't know that we had such problems, but you know, problems can be easily solved. In this scenario, we just put down a little warehouse like we did before here which is going to provide for us. We're going to put it down here, connected to Duluth Transfer Station, and it's configured to, to hold coals for us. Now I'm going to pick up a new car, which is able to hold coals, and it's going to transport coals from here and unload them over here into the warehouse. All right, now we got this problem solved. Let's wait until the colds are there. In the meanwhile, we're working here. The conveyor, the connector goes here. Let's see, is there anything I need to con connect? Ah, I need to put up the recipe here. And here, it's a little bit uh, complicated because you see the conveyor is moving in the wrong way. 
we have to use the flip conveyor order and now you see it's tossing out the ores and now we're going to add these here boom just like that and now we got the coals inside here just add a connector to this one flip the conveyor uh, the connector again add more conveyors to this just like so and there's the output for us Let's flip that one more time and it goes into a new warehouse. Let's put that warehouse down here. Of course you can't do these way more efficiently than I do here because, you know, this is after all just a beginner's tutorial to show you what's possible there. So another warehouse, another connector, and we tell it to store these. So, and you see here now, just like in good old Factorio uh, manner, there's stuff being produced here, which is now rolling over to my warehouse where it's being stored and then it can be transported away by a car, by train and being sold to other towns or whatever. Since I rushed this uh, thing here right now already, there's no town demanding these uh, bars. So we were a little bit too fast there and therefore there's nowhere to sell them. But let's check it out. Either there's somebody in the neighborhood or usually when you provide enough materials to these towns, they open up stores which demand these goods. But I wanted to show you how it's done in this video and I guess you all have a idea about this now. So this sums it up. I just wanted to show you one thing here. The fleet ledger shows you how much money your cars and your trains earn, which is a really interesting thing to do. And to check out also you can do a lot of nifty management things here send them to depots and all the all the things you need to know and apart from that we're we're done from here on you should be able to find your own way around the game and of course the most complicated things are still the train configuration with rail signals and all that but this is such a big topic it would deserve its own video so i hope that was quite helpful for you friends and you see here point roberts would now accept wood planks we did the wrong research and feel free to drop me a comment down below if there are questions open ask away if you feel like i missed out a really important thing just add it in here. The comment section is no competition. I'm very, very happy if you guys help us all to complete the knowledge about this game. Also, sorry about not knowing the warehouse thing with the laboratories. I somehow thought the laboratories can store more things on their own. The first time I used them, I had only a slow trickle because I didn't want to research too fast. So good thing that we sorted this out. Mod the video creator learned something himself. Leave a thumbs up if that was helpful for you or leave a subscription to my channel if you like that kind of content. I dish that out every day. All right, see you guys next time and have a nice day. Bye-bye.